Special shout out this week to Nate for coming here despite having COVID. What a trooper. Oh. You're welcome. There you go. That's my that intro. It's words about books. You don't even have that much COVID. The <laughs> line was COVID. slightly visible. Uh, I did another test, and it was dark as shit, Ben. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. COVID's over. I'm riddled with you COVID. Know, COVID's over. It doesn't matter anymore. Nobody's done yeah, of it. But it will come back if we vote Trump in the office, Ben. It probably it will. will be, it will be released. From that lab in China again to discredit his presidency, which was going so well, Ben. Oh, Christ. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the election. That's that's next year. That's next year yeah. for our November of discontent. Yeah, I was going to say, it's November, so you keep thinking about like the depressing shit in your lives. Cut the yeah, I'm the not ready for another election. Where I spread here. COVID misinformation. It's not time for that yet. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that'll happen next year. <laughs> uh, as we both sniffle and cough. No, we're doing great. We're doing great. Uh, COVID's a myth. Um, I did get my, my <laughs> shot, but uh, not because anyone told me to. It's because I wanted to. To prove that it was fake. Because I still got COVID, guys. <laughs> yeah anytime a doctor offers to shoot something into me i'm just like yeah i'm up for whatever yeah because i'm not what a are you doing <laughs> no <laughs> handle your shit god anywho we are here to talk about halo cryptum yeah. by hugo and nebula award-winning <laughs> author greg bear they don't have a He's huge doing halo I love it. I love so much that that's a real thing that happened. So I don't have a huge uh, about the author for Greg Bear. I've read like one or two of his books. Friend of the show, uh, uh, Pizza Snail, was a big fan of his. And I talked about it with him a lot. But I, I, I don't have like I remember him fondly, I guess. But I can't remember much about what he wrote before. I will tell you just a little bit from like the, the the blurb at the end of this book is that he got involved with Halo. I, I don't know if he... I think he was asked to join the project by 343. Is that who makes it now? Yeah. 343 Industries. Yeah. Okay. So I think named, he was asked by them. Named after Guilty Spark, you see. And, who the hell cares? Uh, seven to and, the power of three is three four three. Ben. Okay. Well, is that relevant? <laughs> why do you, Why does sevens matter? <laughs> I don't know, but the next one is seven to the power of four. That's the one on the the Halo ring that you see in the second game, Ben. It's all, it's all coming together. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. So three four three was like time. we need legitimacy. Is that I don't well I don't know. I mean I think he was interested in the project. I understand his son is a big fan. There you go. So that there, there's might the have connection. Helped. I figured I figured <laughs> someone might be uh, <laughs> yeah f- a fan. But uh, Greg Bear actually died last year. I didn't know that. Yeah, I saw that. So, so this is our in memoriam episode. Yeah, this is we're going to do justice to his entire body of work. But talking about Halo Krypton today. Yeah, probably not. But okay, Halo Halo Krypton. Uh so he gets involved with this. He's he seemed genuinely passionate about the project. I made a lot of jokes and I owe a lot of apologies up front in this episode. So Yeah. Uh number one first apologize joke to I Nate. Made. No. For what? <laughs> For for saying that this would be a bad book, or uh, for doubting you thought my it would be a bad book, or you wouldn't have given it to That's me. That's not true. It's the Dune of Halo. I gave it to you because so, I knew you would hate it potentially. <laughs> okay, so that's my first apology to the guy who said it was the Dune of Halo. I see what you mean, and I kind of agree. Um, that was that wasn't the worst comparison in the world. Oh it sounded God. ridiculous the way you said it. But, like, I get it now. Oh so, 
if you a guy from Goodreads who said it was the Dune of Halo, you're all right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have made fun of your review. And then um, second apology, I guess, is Greg Bear. I don't think he needed the paycheck. I think he was actually surprisingly passionate about this. Like, he put a lot yeah. of work into this. Yeah. He is a man of conviction, I assume, because he, he won some awards, Ben. He, can't, he wouldn't just write anything. He's, he's not well, some sort of Kevin J. Anderson, okay? So here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this book. Um, and I'm going to tease you a little. I'll do the summary and everything. Don't worry. It's good, but it's good in like a traditional science fiction way. And and you're saying Halo, that it could use more Master Chief. They put the Master Chief in the soul. Well, th- this was my confusion going into the book. Uh, so when I pick up a Halo book, right, I'm expecting Master Chief the burly video game shooty man who sells Code Red Mountain Dew. It's not Code Red, it's Gamer Fuel, Ben. There's, I think, a difference? Is there? I thought it just was Code Red. No, I think I don't it care. I don't different. care. Oh my god, Ben. I don't, I'm gonna have to I don't look care. This up. Mountain Dew is gross. So, Master Chief, right? Big Halo man. We once did a stream on Twitch where we covered the entire story of the original Halo. It was painful. I kept driving off cliffs, sometimes not on purpose. And I, oh man, I accidentally killed you. I saved a highlight of that. That was awesome. Uh, I do have fond memories of Halo, I guess. Yeah. But... In, in Halo, there's a thing called and the Gamer Flood, Fuel right? has come back, Ben. Anyway, sorry, go on, yeah. So in Halo, there's a thing <laughs> called the Flood. And the one of the driving forces of the plot in this book is the Flood. And I'm going to spoil a lot of Halo, I... Maybe? I don't know anything about Halo. So... There's the Flood, all I know is this there's book, the Covenant... And you pew and they, pew yeah. them, and you keep blowing things up of larger and larger size until you've won. Yeah, right? So, one of the big plot points of this book is it, it's an ancient aliens book, first off. Oh my god. That was not something I was super expecting. It takes place <laughs> as near as I can tell, like, 50,000 years at least before the events of Halo. Oh my god, am I going to have to get my hair to like do the thing so I can <laughs> aliens? So the way back before uh, our civilization's timeline begins, humans were actually a spacefaring civilization. And we got into a fight with the Flood and the Forerunners. And the Forerunners are humanoid aliens... That came before us. That is why. And then there's another. Yeah. There's another alien species that came before them called the Precursors. <laughs> Not the yeah. best naming. Uh, the, I told you this. Precursors didn't even exist in the the original trilogy. They were an invention after the fact. Okay, so the Flood, right? In this book, the Flood are a mysterious. Uh, threat that can penetrate the advanced technology of a pan-galactic alien civilization in a matter of, like, decades. And it it's this really just powerful entity that nobody knows how to stop. But the humans stopped it once. Well, you, know, problem, you know why, right? I Yeah, because I know why. N- no, you, the, the thing is, the forerunner president was uh, Mr. Donald Trump, and oh, he just yes. said it didn't exist, um, and and so it just it spread out of control. And, and then that's why the forerunners don't for exist anymore. Yeah, the forerunners don't exist anymore because they just got tired of winning. That's that's true. This yeah. is exactly but what happened. What actually happened was the humans beat the flood, but while the humans were fighting the flood. There were refugees fleeing the front line, and they moved into Forerunner-occupied space, provoking a war with the Forerunners, which led to humanity being 
like wiped out and confined Wait. back to Earth. So they fled not towards the home system, but in a random direction that was already no, settled? No, so the thing is, the Forerunners already control almost all of the galaxy, and so it's well, hard to turn some. a corner without running into it. Well, and we took some, and that made them angry. So in their hubris... um. So the the forerunners uh, they wipe out humanity, they devolve them, and whatever the fuck that means, nobody really clarifies that one. It means and then they, they de-evolve they... us, Ben. Yeah. Okay, but reverse then evolution. The... I understand that, but then they the book starts dumber. with anatomically modern humans, and it's all back to normal again. So I don't know what the point of that oh, really? was. Really? Yes. So what? I'm still setting up what? the prelude. <laughs> I'm still setting up the prelude, Nate. So <laughs> okay, the, the they wiped us out, right? They confined us back to Earth. Now they did not figure out how we beat the flood before that happened, because <laughs> in their hubris, they a thought they could do anything we could do, and they could do it better. And B thought we might have been lying about the whole flood thing. Oh, they didn't even but check f- that out. Yeah, they really but did the just deny it <laughs> until it killed them. Now the flood's back, and we got That's where this this book is gonna sort of pick up. It doesn't tell you the flood's back right away, but I wanted to bring up this point early because, okay, so the flood. How did the humans beat it? Big mystery. All the king's horses and all the king's men of this alien civilization just can't figure it out. And I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, in the context of this book, really interesting plot point, really interesting threat. In the context of Halo, you you shoot the big ones and you punch the little ones. (laughs) That's the trick. That's what I figured out. You got to punch the little ones. If too many of them get on you, that's bad. So you just got to... You know, punch them. You know, like with your with your. Uh, you press V, I think was what I did. I was playing on the PC, so. Yeah, I used a controller uh, as it was meant to be done. I mean, maybe so. that's what the forerunners were doing, and maybe that's why they lost, because mouse and keyboard is superior for every shooter. Everyone knows that. Anyhow, yeah, if you like playing lame shooters that aren't about a big burly man punching aliens to death. Okay, now I'm going to tell you one more thing before we get going. There is not a single fight in this book. Oh my god, what? There's a series of one-sided ass kickings that are witnessed <laughs> from afar. <laughs> oh, okay. But the main characters do not engage in combat at any point oh my in this god. book. Oh my god. What? It is almost purely a philosophical and political journey exploring forerunner culture and religion. Oh my god, that's why it's the Dune of Halo? Yes. Well, and there's just a butt-ton of ancestral memories. Interesting. And breeding programs. And there's a lot of Bene Gesserit type stuff. So... They don't have like the breeding program thing. They do genetic enge- like the forerunners do genetic engineering. So like the Tlaxu. That's what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, and so I guess I'll start Okay, with- Ben. Before you before you get into it, real talk. Is this a better Dune book than what Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no question, hands down, yeah. They <laughs> okay. should have gotten this guy to help them write Dune. He'd have done way better. The thing is, he's an old school sci-fi man. He cites like his biggest influence is Ray Bradbury. He he calls out like Isaac Asimov and um, Arthur C. Clarke and uh, all, all the oldies. Orson so Scott is, Card. No, I didn't call him out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, right. and it reads like that. So, 
starts out with a young forerunner, a first form, a manipular of the manipular cast. I, I think he's a builder. So the forerunner society is organized into castes. This is going to be very important that you understand this. Okay. And the forerunners worship a religious ideal called the mantle. And the gist of the mantle is that the forerunners have taken it upon themselves to foster and protect all life in the universe and do noble sciency exploration things more of a star trek than a star wars so the highest cast of the forerunners is the builders they build things and then it's kind of fuzzy but somewhere in there are the life shapers they're like doctors and biologists and geneticists that'll be important Ooh. I should and, call myself that from now on, a life shaper. Yeah, that's what you need. That on my then, business card. Somewhere like right at the bottom, the warriors. Ooh, okay. They're kind of like tr- treated like garbage men because <laughs> it's icky to kill things. And they're not supposed to do that. So there's this young... Um, forerunner he's he's a bit of a problem child he's he's got a thirst for adventure and he he wants to he's he's heeding its call so he's on this planet called i forget not mars it's mars it's whatever they call mars and do you know this right away or does it or is it like oh it's a red planet next to a blue planet and the blue planet has humans on it so yeah it's it's not I don't think it's supposed to be subtle. So he had a family, right? But they didn't like him or like they couldn't stand him or so he he gets a swap father, that's a thing in their culture. So he goes to live with some miners. They're like fostering him for a while. Like I view it I think it's more like medieval shit where like a a, a lord would take another lord's kid to foster for some reason. I n- I've never fully understood. I'm not an anthropologist. Yeah. This sounds a whole lot like house of trade. He's been where he goes. To it, yeah. Except. Yeah. So, uh, he's, he's hanging out with this minor family on Mars and they, somehow he gets this suit of armor. All the forerunners wear armor and the armor like takes complete care of them the armor is so sophisticated that when they wear it they can basically live without f- sleeping or eating for l- long periods of time what in fact they don't need to sleep at all like it, it just replaces that biological function for them whatever sleep does to like wash out your brain the armor can just do that for you and just give you a brainwash oh um okay and they've got Shit. little cortana master chief that armor they have what? They have, they have little Cortanas. They call them ancillaries, oh my God. but it's They're a so blue much woman. better than us. It's always a blue woman. Of, co- of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> so he's got a suit of armor that they got like gently used. I don't know. And it's got an ancillary that we will come to find out was programmed by the librarian. Everyone has like She's Doctor Who names game. in this. Is it? Yeah, she was uh mentioned in uh basically computer logs in the third game. Okay, well she's <laughs> she's around. So everybody's got um Doctor Who names. They're all the something. But they also have really dumb long names. Like the main character's name is is oh boy, Born Stellar makes eternal lasting. I think is his full name. <laughs> Mercifully, they just call him Born or Born Stellar for most of this. Born. This is part of the reason I wanted you to read this. 
because I saw Born Stellar makes Eternal Lasting as the the main character, and I thought, you know, who would really like this? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a little heady, uh, but I I didn't hate it. But like once they got going, I didn't hate it. How so, long does it take to get going? Um, it it I think it moves at a pretty good clip, like. But the reward is it's revealing more about this culture and more about the conspiracies and, and weird political stuff going on. Again, not very like Halo type stuff. But I'll keep walking you through it. We'll see if we get there. Uh, so the Life Shaper programmed this ancillary. And this ancillary, uh, I'm going to call it a Cortana, so civilians know what we're talking about okay the uh the, the cortana is telling him hey why don't you go to earth sorry air day tyrene why don't you go to air day tyrene and there might be like precursor treasure there there might be precursor artifacts you should check it out how do you know that you should just sneak on this ship i'll tell you exactly how to sneak on a ship and sneak into earth and so he does that. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense at first. You might be wondering why he's so gullible. Yeah. He's literally 12 years old. Took me a minute to figure that out. But uh yeah. Now the forerunners they mature a little faster, but they also live for like tens of thousands of years. So he's a baby. Oh my god. And apparently the forerunners also go through many mutations in their life. Like when a forerunner I don't know. It, it's like a promotion for forerunners, I guess. But it's also like a deeply personal ceremonial family thing. So like when you have a mentor as a forerunner, be it a parent, a teacher, a boss, like that person usually of your cast can imprint their like genetic code and memories onto you and it'll transform you into literally a bigger forerunner sometimes more handsome as well sometimes less we'll get to that just uh, keep that one in your back pocket okay there's a there's mutations so okay Sneaks into Erd Tyrene. Gonna call it Earth from here on out. <laughs> Please. He goes to Earth and he meets up with a couple of humans and he tells them, I'm looking for precursor treasure. And he's kind of racist at first because he's heard like <laughs> humans are these brutish, devolved ape creatures. Yeah, wouldn't and, they be like Homo sapiens from forever ago that like They've got stone tools or something. They can light a fire and Yeah, no. No. What? These they're they're basically back to what they used to be. And that is partly due to the Life Shaper's influence. She was the one who talked to the Council of Forerunners into letting humanity continue to exist. She convinced them that it was important that they exist should the flood ever return. And she implanted a, I'm going to say Gaius, Gaius in them. Yes. Um, okay. Kel it's Celtic for uh, like an imperative that. Yeah. They, I, I've watched code Gaius one episode and then I never did again. Yes, I, I know what didn't. that is. But Good. I've heard that name. I, I would, I would recommend not. <laughs> You're pissing somebody <laughs> off, I'm sure. Yeah. So the humans are guided by the librarian. They hear her voice. They want to do her bidding. And is the librarian they... secretly evil? Then, because I never got that impression. But that's kind of. Sounds... I was kind of wondering that myself. I was kind of wondering that myself. Let's go on this journey together. Okay. So he meets two humans. Now this is where things get 
a little complicated for those of you who care about archaeology. And the funny thing Greg Bear does is he has the forerunner muse that everything they're doing is just going to make the uh, the fossil record of Earth incomprehensible in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, well, you and know they'll think how... that like, pyramids were made by aliens? and <laughs> <laughs> Well, in this case, they were. So, you know how... Um, we've just like, we used to think Neanderthals or Neanderthals, however you say it, uh, were like proto humans. Like they came first and then we came later, but then we found out we actually existed at the same time and interbred and we won. Yeah. And that there was also, um, the Maybe Hobbit people, have been losers. Yeah. Homo Florensis or whatever. Ooh, I didn't know about that one. There's, there, there's a small hominid they found, I forget where. I want to say like Indonesia, but I'm not sure. And I think they're it's also called debating homo- whether the, or not what uh, they're also debating whether or not hominids existed here in the North American continent by about a hundred thousand years earlier than we suspected. Well, that's the thing I've heard about. Like they, as they keep studying human history, they find out things just keep getting older, which is oh my god, cool. It was the forerunners. And- yeah, well, and Greg Bear obviously like latched onto that. That's one of the real science things he brings in. So Homo Florensis, I think, is the inspiration for this. The the forerunner born stellar, he teams up with two humans. Chakus and Oh shit. Bill. <laughs> Riser. Riser. <laughs> Chakus and Riser. Okay. And Riser is one of these little hobbit people. Oh my god. Does he realize he's, his entire hominid class is going to be wiped out? Uh, you know what? By the end, I think they do realize that, yeah. Oh! Oh, yeah, shit! Things, I mean, things. it's Halo. Things take a dark turn. You, like, you know the Forerunners aren't going to be there. Yeah, I know, I know that the Forerunners lose <laughs> so, this war that's so, coming to them. Yeah. So, uh, like, like we, we know we don't remember them like handing us our planet or anything. So that's a, that's a thing. So he's he's got Chakus, who is like a bronze god. He's he's a totally normal human being who is smart and clever and strong and all the stuff humans are. And then you got riser. who's a little guy, but he's got a lot of heart. And, and, and maybe, maybe we all question whether or not he should even bother living. No, he's, he's actually probably more important than Chakus. Like, so what? his family, but he's not a bronze God. He's not a I normal, know. a normie That's... like the rest of us. After all, isn't that the lesson the hobbits were meant to teach us that even the smallest person can change the world. Think about that. So, uh, Chakus's family, the riser's family has been exploring this one Island and this Island's super hard to get to. There's these weird, uh, jellyfish kind of life forms that attack boats, but, Oh my God. Oh, it's, it's the George R. R. Martin tough thing. Kind of, but not really. Um, oh. It's not that complicated. So, uh, bu- 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 bu. so wait, so why the is jelly... he even teaming up with these humans? Oh, because He's they know where like, the precursor treasure is. Oh, okay. He's looking for precursor treasure, and they're like, I know where some precursor treasure is. And he does think for a second, like, oh, especially when they tell him, like, you got to take your armor off. It's upsetting the jellyfish. <laughs> He's like, are you, are you guys gonna mug me? Is that what this is? Taking me out in the middle of the lake to no, no, of course not. Me? No, but they make him sandals and a hat, so he knows. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so he takes All off right. his armor. He takes off his armor. They eventually sing the jellyfish to sleep. I'm not making that part up. And then okay. they cruise All on right. into the island, and. Uh, Bornsteller, Chakus, and Riser get left on the island. 
And the boat's like, we'll come back in two days. Don't worry, that boat's never coming back. (laughs) Okay. They start exploring the island, and they find that there's all this, like, weird uh, forerunner technology there. There's stuff that seems to, like, bend space, and you got to do all these weird movements to, like, get through mazes and stuff. And Riser has it all memorized. His people have been exploring this for generations, and they've they've figured out most of it. So there's this little maze you navigate through. But then you get to a point where no human can go any further. Every human that tries gets killed. But a forerunner can go further. Does he still have his armor off? Yeah, he is nude, but for the loincloth, sandals, and fancy hat. Okay. I don't know if that's actually the case, but I pictured him nude, <laughs> but for the loincloth, sandals, and fancy hat. And I think you should that too. That checks out. That checks out. <clears throat> so, he crosses the barrier, and he uh, what he finds is a cryptum. Ah, that's the name of the the book, Ben. That's the name of the book. Okay, Cryptum. Here's what this is. Uh, Near as I can tell, if you piss everybody off, (laughs) uh, you can either accept, like, execution, or if you're fancy enough, if you're high enough rank, you might be allowed to go into a cryptum, which puts you in a state of like some kind of suspended animation where you meditate on higher mysteries for all time, I guess. Okay. But don't worry because there's a way to open the cryptum. And again, this is according to the library's design. She wants somebody to come along and open this cryptum. And we don't really know why. So Born Seller, they're like, the the cryptum AI starts asking him a bunch of questions. Like, do you take responsibility for this? And he's like, well, gee, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. And he's like, sure. Okay, yeah. but do you, do you take responsibility for this? And he's like, yeah, whatever. And so he opens the cryptum and out pops the didact oh god he's the villain from the halo 4 and the the librarian's lover maybe the librarian's lover definitely they're married ah there you go the didact is the guy who was in charge of the forerunner army when they conquered the humans and Born Seller's sitting there with two humans, and he's like... I thought Born Steller was going to become the didact. Like, I thought they were the same person. Oh, I don't know. But... Maybe there's, like, a whole book going on here. Maybe that's going to happen by yeah. the end. I don't know. And then... Um, Is that what's going to happen? Yes, that's what's going to happen. What? <laughs> okay. All right. You've got my... Then. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Speaking of things that are... Stiff and hard. <laughs> the didact starts out in a state of like locked joints, rigor mortis, and Bornsteller has to like take a tube of electrolytes and shove it between his gritted teeth and then take another tube of some mysterious gray shit and shove it in his mouth. And he just does that for a little bit until the guy starts moving again. And then the AI is like, okay, now stretch his arms out and massage his muscles. And I think Born Seller is like working on this old man for like 16 hours. I don't know. And then he wakes up. I imagine yeah. this is like just a whole chapter. He, then he shoved more tubes in. <laughs> it's actually like, <laughs> it's actually like two paragraphs. I'm, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Oh, you know, see, the, this is where Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert, they would have made that like five pages. <laughs> no, it, it's it's not painfully long. But he does get up, and he's, the first thing he says to Bornsteller is, I curse you. He didn't want to be oh. woken up. 
Okay, bye. And... Put a pillow over his face and <laughs> put him back to sleep. <laughs> put a mattress over his face. And... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so he wakes up and he starts stretching his legs, starts going on long hikes around the island. He refuses to talk to them. He's very angry. And he just kind of ignores them. <laughs> He just walks past <laughs> Barney Stiller in the U.S. <laughs> well, he always seemed like kind of an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And then one day he he uh, decides to acknowledge them and he starts asking them questions. He's like, so that's a human, right? And Barney Stiller's like, uh, yes, sir. Yes, it is. But he's not like, that okay. other one. He, okay. I need to be. Well, really no, no. Clear. He's cool he's with Riser. Human. He's cool with Riser. Oh, okay. All right, fine. He's he told the librarian. He told the librarian he liked the Florians. He wants to keep those. Wow, they're cool. You know what? Just for that, we're gonna we're gonna wipe them out. (laughs) So, so uh, he likes the Florians, but he's like, I don't like that guy. What's his deal? He he's like basically so he's like you know you know how I fought this war right and and you know how it was against them and I killed all of them. Why? Why is he back? And Chakas is like, "Hey, fuck you, buddy." Yeah. And you don't have an army behind you now, fuck face. I'll kick your ass. Well, he's he's not gonna kick his ass. He's pretty big. <laughs> Pretty big. It's pretty big. That that tube of juice really really bulked him back up. Uh, also, he's got some more of the forerunner armor now. Oh, shit. And he's, he, wow. Yeah, he, he's like, but he's chill. You know, he's talking to him. He doesn't seem like he's going into a blind rage, ready to kill every human. He just kind of wants to know what's going on. And he realizes that his wife, the librarian, is behind all of this. Oh, my God. And for some reason, she can't just pick up the phone and give him, no. a, give him a space call uh, and tell him. Did they even invent phones in, hey, in Forerunner World, Ben? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever uses a phone. <laughs> they do send messages. But there's a lot of in-person meetings, I think, because it's more dramatic, but also, like, I don't know why. Because it's like Dune, Ben. Well, it's like Dune, but there's a lot of AIs. Like, we're going to find out perhaps too many AIs. <laughs> okay. Which I guess is kind of like Dune. Eh, maybe yeah. Maybe like Dune. I don't know. There you so, go. Uh, so he's like... Okay, so my wife can't just call me and tell me to meet her out in Space Denny's or whatever. So I have to... She engineered a whole race of intelligent beings with subliminal messages coded into their DNA <laughs> to, to give me this message to go on this what? journey. What? <laughs> That's why she kept the humans around? Well, we'll find out. I need to tell she my did... husband to go to Space Denny's, but like... <laughs> No, 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 no. She did have... She has many layered reasons. It's like Dune. Okay. Um, So, basically, the librarian... She argued with the council that, A, wiping out whole sentient species sounds like not super mantle, you know? It's very (laughs) unmantle of you. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And second, this is the only species that ever repelled an extra galactic threat. So, like, what if we just kept a few on reserve, you know? And she wins that argument. So that is her purpose. But she also has other purposes because we're going to find out the council is corrupt. What? Politicians being corrupt, Ben? Say it ain't so. Yeah. Yeah, so he, I'm going to yada yada a bit. <laughs> they get a ship. Um, it's a new ship. She built it for him. She had it ready because she knew this was going to happen. She's very smart. 
Oh, okay. So and, she's not like psychic or can see the future. She's just no. She's just smart. Straight all this. She's okay. just smart. So they get in the ship and they take off, and they're gonna go gather information. They want to find out what's going on. So they go to the the first. You're in the ship. The ship grows armor. Like it can make you a new set of armor. Okay. Fuck yeah, so pop makes, that on some of those humans. Yep, makes porn seller some armor, it makes riser some armor, makes chakas some armor. Did he at least keep and the hat he, and the sandals? Uh no, he did not keep the hat and the oh, sandals. Come on. Bro, we made those for you. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I get it. I get it. The armor's hooked up to like these data archives and it starts telling the humans everything about their history. It starts given born stellar more access to information about his own culture like some of the political divides and do they do they do they take in all that information look at each other and then look at the aliens and go you motherfuckers you yeah kind us. of yeah you they sons do of bitches. They, they do actually yeah <clears throat> chakas is uh not happy not a happy camper they go to this one world that the humans used to control where there used to be a, a precursor artifact and they find that it's been totally fucking burned to the ground. Oh my God. You can just burn precursor artifacts with like fire. Well, no. Uh Oh, uh Oh, which is why that's weird. And also this precursor artifact it initially held uh, some like magic eight ball that you could humans figured out how to talk to it and it would answer questions, but whatever happened with it, they started to not like the answers and then wow. they started to really not like the answers. And so the humans added a bunch of extra shit. To keep anyone from ever talking to it. Uh -oh. But when the Didact conquered the humans, he talked to it. And uh -oh. he won't tell anyone what it said. But... Is it about the flood? That, that precursor artifact that had this thing imprisoned, that broke. Oh. Shit. And the thing that was imprisoned is no longer imprisoned. Is it still there? Just chilling out? Or is it, it gone? It's gone. Ah, shit. So, the reason that the best thing to do now is since the librarian has implanted memories in the humans, the didact kind of knows we're facing the flood. He kind of knew we'd be facing the flood when he went into the cryptum and he disagreed with everything that the council wanted to do to prevent the flood. Spoilers, it's make the halos. Oh, they wanted to make the halos and he didn't? He did not. Huh. I thought he was all about that war. He... Okay. I'll give you a spoiler. Because I did read a little bit ahead to what happens after this book. The Didact is driven insane by something. Okay. But he I mean, is he does not... become the villain of the fourth game. So. He is not evil yet. Huh. He's actually kind of an old warrior who seems pretty honorable, who doesn't really want to go further than is necessary in defeating an enemy. Like he's all about eliminating threats, but not genocide necessarily. Even he didn't even think about genociding us then. Oh, he thought about it, but he's <laughs> not super pissed that his wife didn't. Okay. Like he, he accepts it pretty readily. So, then they decide they got to head to the San Shun. Oh the yeah, they're the rings a bell. They're the prophets, I think, or the elites. Uh, 
Well, in this one, they're kind of whores. Okay. Yeah, they they're, like the, s- they're the commanding cast of the Covenant. Uh, they're not in the Covenant yet. They used to be no, allied no, with this, humans. This is way before the Covenant even exists. Yeah, they used to be allied with the humans. For their role, That's weird. Uh, they, they surrendered. They surrendered pretty quick. And they are confined to one solar system. And then someday they will worship the people who are confining them to one solar system and try to genocide us who are their pals. What a bunch of dicks. And the didact is thinking the memory is locked in the human or the key, so we got to take him to see the, the, the Sanshun and then seeing their old allies will trigger more ancestral memories. Bada bing, bada boom, we'll know how to defeat the Flood. And... I'm going to yada yada again. Um, <laughs> because we know that whatever plan they come up with is going to fail. Because I know well, how the I, flood were defeated. and uh... <laughs> I'm kind of fuzzy on some of the connective tissue. But <laughs> it's it's basically... The Didact wants to give Bornsteller access to more information. But his current weak first form manipular body can't handle the load. And so there's one thing they can do. They can do (laughs) a quick and dirty uh, street mutation. I forget what it's called. I think it's a Brevik mutation or something. (laughs) But basically, like, a mutation is supposed to be this sacred thing. Like, you do it with your family and your cast. And it happens in, like, a whole ritual. Someone comes along with some street drugs and, and, like, And and this one we're going to do, like, in the ship bathroom. (laughs) There you go. It's real quick. (laughs) And also, it's going to be cross-cast. Oh, my God. Disgusting. You're going to rub a mutation out in the bathroom and you're not even going to protect yourself from other casts? Jesus Christ. So, Bornsteller is a builder? I don't fucking know. Uh, But he's not a warrior. I can tell you that's what he's not. But he's going to be if he accepts this mutation. Oh, gross. He's going to be the worst cast? He's going from the top to the bottom? And and that means... Um, oh, because the didact needs help. Like he needs somebody he can like bounce ideas off of. He needs right now. Bornsteller is not really contributing a whole lot to this mission. The humans are there to remember shit and Bornsteller is there to like wake up the didact, but he already did that. (laughs) So now he's just kind of there and let me put my genetic material in you. I need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. Boom. <laughs> Brevic mutation. <laughs> so he gets mutated into the, the didact's uh, warrior. He's, he's a builder warrior. He winds up looking a bit like the didact. He gets all of the didact's like memories and um, abilities and it comes to him slow. Like the Didax personality continues to exist within him for some time before being like fully assimilated into the combined being that he will become. So he's slowly learning everything about the Didax. So they go to see the Sanshun and there's one guy guarding the Sanshun and he's kind of crazy and he like the council would probably like the didact to return to the council because right now he's kind of out wandering around on this clandestine mission and they don't like that but this guy's an old friend they're they're all war buddies and even though he's crazy he's like you know what technically you still outrank me if they forgot to remove your rank I'm not going to check that. Okay. All right. And he sends him out to the Sanshun. Problem is the Sanshun has already been like, 
blown up. There are there's a bunch of forerunner ships bombing the surface. The sun shooting. What? Why? Lobbing bombs back and well, what happened? What, what happened was the librarian came through here a couple of weeks ago. Grabbed okay. a couple of Sanshun, essentially kidnapped them, <laughs> whisked them off to we know not where. <laughs> and the Sanshun had been stockpiling weapons. They were kind of low key planning to rebel anyway. But that was a big, like, I'm going to rebel now. Quit kidnapping us. Yeah. And so uh, they rebel. The forerunners put it down extremely violently. They're they're you know scorching the planet. Everybody gets captured. Dadek gets captured. Uh, it's the master builder. He's a dick. He's a he's a bad guy. Oh my god! Master builder. What's his name sh- then? Uh, yeah. Oh, he has a name. The fuck's his I name? know. I'm sure he does. I don't remember. Oh, all Let's right. call him Kevin. <laughs> so Kevin, the master builder, kidnap or he captures everybody, and he's not using warriors. He's not using the warrior cast to conduct his war. No, no. Oh he's God. using builder security. Motherfucker's that... got a private army. That is not very mantle. That is very not mantle. You are correct. I'm yes. disgusted. And so is the didact. So, uh, Kevin is torturing everybody. Is torturing for everybody. That seems very not mantle. It's, uh, it's not super mantle. But he comes up to Born Stellar and he's like, "The hell happened to you?" And Born Stellar fucking Master Chief punches his entire face in. Born Stellar's totally paralyzed. He locked them all in their armor. Oh. I believe I told you nobody fights anything in this book. I know, Ben. I just I just want yeah. to believe. No, he doesn't. <laughs> so he tells Born Stellar, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions. What do you know about the Diet Act? What do you know about this? And Born Stellar's kind of vague, like he knows that sis, yeah, something librarian something mission something whatever and kevin's Mountain like Dew gamer fuel yeah kevin's like you know what i like voltage I, instead i would i would throw you in jail the rest of your life but your family your family is going to Call in every favor they got to get you out of this. They're going to pay a ruinous fine. Spoiler, it doesn't ruin them at all. They own planets. They're, his family's very fucking rich, we're going to find out. <laughs> planets? You could buy those with spice, Ben. Yeah, they don't need that. Why, they got AI. Why just a cup of spice and you can own entire solar systems? Yeah, so uh, that, that's going on. And he's like, so I'm going to let you go. And they get one final thing with the didact and the humans. And there's some Sanshun who like are forced to, I don't know, show up. Okay. <clears throat> they just, they show up. They show up, they get scolded. It's, it's the, the, the bastard builder's an asshole. It's the whole point of the scene. Just trust me, he's an asshole. Okay. And so Born Stellar gets sent back. Now Born Stellar is starting to get kind of jacked now. He's a big dude now. He's getting that warrior blood. He's getting that alpha chat. God damn right. He's drinking the gamer fuel. <laughs> not going to fight anybody, though. Don't worry about it. He's getting big, <laughs> but not yet. And so they send him back home. So he goes back home to his parents' palatial planet. One of the many, <laughs> many palatial planets they have just laying around. And um, I can see why they his... needed to get rid of humans so that this asshole could have a second or third or fourth <laughs> summer vacation planet home. You fucking asshole. You're, you're talking about the affordable housing crisis in a nutshell, <laughs> Nathaniel. It's very topical. And 
his family is like very waspy. Like they don't want to pretend any, like they, they kind of just want to pretend everything's normal, even though they got this mutated half ogre son. <laughs> and okay, he's weird hold on. Now. Back up for a moment before you start talking about his, his the weird half ogre son. The flood is happening currently, right? Like it's back. Yeah, it's, no, it's, they've been invading Forerunner systems for forty three years at this point, and and they're just like lounging in their palatial planet estate, tr- pretending. No, they're like building like is... Halo after Halo. <laughs> just throwing Halo after Halo at the flood. Yeah. Okay. They're they're All building. Right. All right, tell me about their weird ogre son. Okay, so he's he's becoming more didact-like. He's starting to understand the man. He's starting to understand sacrifice and, and duty and honor. And he's starting to understand that his species is not really living up to their ideals. And that what's not going on here... Not mantle at all. What's going on here is not good. But the last thing he saw before he left Sanshun was a halo in the sky oh shit oh god are they gonna are they gonna fire it on them they are going to fire the halo on sanshun jesus christ that so is hanging very out. not mantle and they fired the halo as a test at that previous planet where the prisoner got out that was a halo test. You can't just burn it down with fire, but you can burn it down with a halo. Oh, shit. That's a super fire. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know the games, the halos are big guns. Yeah, that's the that's the spoiler from the first game that came out fucking 22 years ago. Now, Bornsteller's dad is also a builder. One of the people that constructed the halo. Now, there are 12 halos. But whoops a doodle we misplaced one. And also... I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> the COVID is, is making me a little tired. You know, I had a big yawn. I was like, oh, I'm getting a little sleepy. Did you say they misplaced a halo? Well, that's like a planet-sized construct. It, it more that they misplaced. Um, well, <laughs> when I say misplaced, I mean they put the world's most powerful AI in charge of it. The AI fired it at the planet where that prisoner was, breaking him out, and then both the Halo and the prisoner were never seen again. <laughs> okay. Um... Did anyone, like, follow up on that? Or were they just like, oh, sometimes you, you win some, you lose some. Sometimes well, your halos disappear. It happens to everyone. <laughs> We've got 11 more. What's the worst that could happen? 11? Shit, man. Yeah, they, they had they more have halos an... than uh, than they're gonna have, anyway. They have, you know, what would have been a little more poetic is if they had 13 halos. And one of the halos betrayed them. You know that religion thing, like it's a little Judas halo. You see what I did there? Oh, is that why we don't like the number thirteen? It's one of the reasons. Huh. But um, they didn't do that. There's twelve. So it they helps got, there they know is it. a Judas. I mean, of course there is. I don't care. It's an so, AI. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget what the bad AI is in this one. Is it mendicant bias? Mendicant, yeah, yeah. He's he's mentioned in the third game. Yeah, mendicant bias is the AI that stole a halo. Oh, it was him who fired it and then took the halo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, and they're like, nah, I'm sure it's fine. So. Uh, again, I'm going to yada yada a bit. So Bornsteller over here is a conversation between his dad and some young dude from the council. The young dude from the council is like, yada yada, weren't allowed to blow up Sanshun. Yada yada, 
vote of no confidence in the master builder. Oh, yeah. So the master builder gets kicked out. Um, and he's like, turns I've out, got access to halos. I'll just fire them on you. Well, he doesn't. Whoever the oh. head counselor is. But something's also going screwy with the domain. I'm he unclear allows for what... a peaceful transition of power? Uh, I guess. Okay. It kind of right. happens off screen. He's deposed off screen. Okay. So I don't anyway, really what... know. Domain? Yeah. Why are you... The, the domain is kind of like, you know, the, uh, da, 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 what are they? What are the, the, the Protoss. You know ah. how they all like, they have access to like all their ancestral data or whatever. And they get uploaded into the, the Protoss collective unconscious or something. Yeah. That bullshit. Yeah. So I don't know what the domain is, but it's like that, but it's also like a cloud server. Okay. So it's, it's, yeah. It's like Azure or, or Google Cloud or AWS or whatever. Uh, whatever they're running it on, though, it's having an outage. And it's weird because they store both the memories and personalities of their dead and like meeting minutes in the domain. Okay. And so they don't have any of their documentation. Like, judges will use the domain as a reference to uh, site precedent and such. And they don't they don't have that anymore. Some, something screwy with the domain. Oh, my God. Which is God. bad. That's yeah, really bad. Sounds you bad. You lost all your ancestors. Your shit. <laughs> yeah, you're... You lost a halo heaven... and all your ancestors. You guys are really fucked up. <laughs> It's kind of like heaven is like temporarily offline or like having some connection issue. So <laughs> uh, they believe the didact to be dead. They believe the master builder executed him. They don't know what happened to the humans. And they want born stellar to come give testimony from his didact memories. So Bornsteller goes, I'm yada yada a lot, by the way. Sorry for the halo purists out there. Bornsteller goes to the council home world, which is described as being like an orange. Like, you know how an orange can, can open into different pieces. Oh, I thought you're, I thought you were pausing for a moment and you were going to say like an orange planet and then you just said it was an orange and you blew my no, fucking mind yeah like you know how an orange can open into different pieces so like imagine like the orange like bloomed like a flower and then could like close that and that's their home world i don't know if it's their home world but it's where the council lives i don't know what advantage there is to blooming like an orange slash flower but it looks neat. It's a big flex. You see that, you're going to be like, oh, shit, these guys know what they're doing. Yeah. I don't know why they did it, but they knew how to do it. They, these are the kind of people who will never leave <laughs> access to uh, heaven or an entire super weapon. Yeah, They'll so never the, thing I'm unclear on, the thing I'm un- unclear on is like one halo can kind of exterminate like most life, right? I think that they needed multiple halos to cover the entire Milky Way. Oh, okay. So that's why there's more than one. Yeah. But usually what happens is they fire and then trigger each other. And, you know, one will just wipe out everything because they'll trigger the others. So we'll also find out that the life shaper librarian lady, she's in on the halo project. Oh, my God. But she, and I feel like this is a place where the book maybe um, was a little constrained by the video games. The Halos are both, I don't know, maybe this makes a kind of sense. They're both super weapons, but also nature preserves. The librarian has been collecting species and flora and fauna and whole biomes and putting them in the halos 
to preserve them should the worst happen. That's a big reveal. Please be odd. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes sense because there are flood on the halo in the first game. Oh, there are flood on the halo because the master builder convinced the librarian. I don't know if he convinced her or if he just kind of overrode her, but he took some of the halos and let flood loose on them to see how the flood worked. Could they not oh, by just the way, see how they worked as they were getting murdered by them? I think that's pretty useful. I mean, well, I think this is before they were like really getting murdered by them. So one okay. of the interesting things is how the flood spread initially started. That that is kind of cool. They go into that. So there was so the a, human... there was this break in uh, quarantine procedures in a Chinese lab, right? And the flood came out. Um, and they just start getting everyone, and the Chinese, they, they kind of downplayed how bad it was, but you can no, really this, tell No, this didn't happen at a uh, Sanshun wet market. This actually happened <laughs> in your decadent Western puppy mills. So, there was a particular sp- But they, they blamed it on the Sanshun wet market, even if all <laughs> evidence pointed to those puppy mills. So there was a particular, uh, there's a set of circumstances that kind of collided here. So uh, they found this ship outside of the galaxy. And in this ship, there were these cylinders of powder. And the powder produced psychotropic effects in animals, but not sentient beings. And one of the side effects of putting this powder on these animals was it made these like dog things super cool? <laughs> and but it also they... gave them a bit of the Green Goblin, where they were extra agitated and and deadly. No, not 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 right away. So Ooh, there started to be a black market for the no. The humans did not authorize like the selling of these animals, but there was a black market because these puppies were so cool. <laughs> there was a black market for them. <laughs> and how are they cooler, Ben? D- I think it made them smarter, but in a charming way. I think that's how it's described. Okay. Like, like they could do they'd more fetch for your you. Slippers. They would. Yeah. All they right, could they entertain you better. And the elite the elite started collecting them as trophies because they were very hard to get. And they started breeding them. And over a series of generations of these animals, mutations started to develop. And then they pull out the flamethrowers and they tearfully put down the whole pack. But then the animals started... Uh, some of them, like one in three or something, developed like a tuft of hair. I don't know if this means anything, but it's tuft of hair. And then the other animals uh, eventually just started attacking and eating them. And it got really weird and dark. And And they... They didn't shut that shit down right away. No, they did. They exterminated them, and they were kind of wondering, wow, what the hell was that about? But it turned out that somewhere out there... There was a population of humans who had been eating the puppies. Oh, idiots. Why? And now they started to change, but they were also kind of manipulative. And so what they would do is they would, they, they ate the puppies and then they would take an infected person, kill them and force feed them to other non-infected people. What the make fuck? Them and inf- yeah, no, it what? gets really like. That's oh what I'm saying. God. Like, yeah, it was one of them. Uh, Reed Richards was he? Uh, was he doing that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, it behaved very intelligently. That was the thing. Uh, so there was like this whole like cannibalistic sacrifice thing. They had a whole ritual. Like they were doing human sacrifices to spread the flood infection, and what humanity devised as a way to stop it was basically 
they came up with a genetic thing that An, they could uh, a put RNA vaccine. Some might say <laughs> they could put it into human beings, and if the if the flood attempted to assimilate those human beings, it would destroy them. The so, flood, you mean, not the human yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. If the flood attempted to assimilate the human beings, it would destroy the flood. So they put one third of their population treated with this nanovirus in the way of the flood. The flood consumed them and died. That's how the humans did it. Huh. And then when the humans got their ass kicked, they like destroyed all their research. They did. <laughs> when the humans knew they Fuck were losing, them. they destroyed every specimen, every sample, and every record of what they did. And the only way to figure it out was to try to connect with the human ancestral memories. They were able to get like some scans of human brains before they died. And they were able to like encode that in the genes. It's it, it's all like very yada yada. I'm not going to get into it. If that sounds cool to you, read the fucking book. Kind of sounds cool, actually. Yeah, go ahead and read. The... Spoilers. I quite like this book. Oh my god. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, read the book if that sounds cool. It, it it is a good book. If you like Halo and this sounds cool, I would recommend the book or at least the audio book. I whisper synced this one, so like. I was reading and then I went for a walk and I actually am starting to like whisper sync when it works. Sometimes huh. it doesn't sync, but, uh, uh isn't it an audible thing like built in? If you, if you get it on audible and you get it on Kindle, That's theoretically it should synchronize the two. Sometimes the synchronizing from my Kindle takes like five minutes, which is annoying. But I guess also I'm complaining about the biggest white person problem ever. <laughs> so <laughs> wars are breaking out, uh, <laughs> but like you, your Kindles take five minutes to sink. My Kindle takes five minutes to sink. <laughs> I live in the first world. This is my problem. <laughs> I I can't imagine anyone ever having it worse. So. Except these humans that got eaten by the flood. That sucked. Anyway. Yeah. Read the book. I don't care. So while the dude's given testimony, or before he even really gets to the testimony, the council gets attacked by M Medicaid AI. <laughs> and... <laughs> I can't keep the names straight. They're they're a little. I, I assume if you play the games, gonna, these are like big you were reveals. A joke about Medicaid. I no, no. I just medicant. Men, men, mendicant. Mendicant. I think is his name. Okay, mendicant. M B. Big old M B. M B. I'm gonna call him Merle. Merle. <laughs> no. No, I'm not. I've already used too many names. An elderly man? What the fuck? <laughs> not all Merles are elderly. They that is incorrect, through... Ben. If you were born a Merle, they go through a series of mutations to become elderly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it comes back with with the Halo. A bunch of oh, I forgot a crucial detail. <laughs> When he arrives at Planet Orange, the halos are all there. All 11 halos. Uh, yeah, you're missing one, but okay. They gathered them for the purpose of probably deactivating them. Question mark? Yeah, but then the other halo shows up. And the and halos start fighting each other. They do. <laughs> In like an AI way. The AI <laughs> tries to seize control of all the halos. Okay. And it can't get all of them. It can only get like five. Yeah, if that sounds is... right, because there's only seven by the time Master Chief comes around to blow them up. Yeah. 
So they can only get five of them. <coughs> and then the planet gets basically like blown up. There's a big fight. I kind of lost track of what was going on at this point. Wait, the, the, the orange blows up? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I know. They put so much effort into that. So the orange kind of blows up, and then they escape in um, a falcon? A foul something? I assume if I played Halo, I would know the name of this craft. But I didn't, so it didn't stick with me. You would. They what is it? It's it's some kind of ship. It seemed like a ship that would be in the games. Key ship, I want to say, or something. No, like that. it's. I think no. it started with an F. Fucking key ship. I don't know, but it's kind of small. It doesn't fit a lot of people. A frigate. So there's no. <laughs> there's this one. There's this one sexy warrior lady. Born Stellar's all into her. I'm. I'm sorry. What? Where did she come from? Has she been here the whole time? And yada yeah, yada away. Yeah, I kind of yada yada. Okay. Her. All right. <laughs> but she becomes relevant now. Okay. So they. She. In again, I kind of lost track of the action here. She grabs Born Stellar and a counselor and gets him into this ship. And they manage to escape the system while all the fighting's going on and another big old ship comes out of the portal and starts firing on the enemy halos and the other halos start running through the portal to escape uh, the ones that haven't been taken over. And there's a whole big fight and they barely escape with their lives. And also, this isn't really important, but in the audio book, the sexy warrior lady is Scottish. Okay, of course. I don't know why he chose that accent, but it was a choice, and I respected him for it. <laughs> it was a choice. So Do we they know get who to the uh, audio book person. I'm sure you could look it up. I don't care. Okay, it's not someone we already know, though. It's not. It's not no, it's not. <laughs> it's not Ray Porter. <laughs> okay. It's not Ray Porter. It's not Will Wheaton. <laughs> uh, okay. If it was Will Wheaton, I would have just read the thing while I was walking. <laughs> yeah, I knew. I know you would have. <laughs> so they get to the Ark. That's what's on the other side of the portal. All the halos are around. The the librarians repairing them, seeding them with new life if they got a little too messed up. And she she finds uh, her crew finds Born Stellar, the Scottish lady, and the counselor. <laughs> and um, takes them aboard. And the the book kind of ends with. Born Stellar seems to be kind of like taken over by the didact personality within him. And this gets weird. And this is like Dune weird. Sees the librarian. And he recognizes her as his wife. And she believes original didact to be dead oh, and but he's not she embraced right? yeah, well they don't know that but he is he's hap- not where is original didact right now it's not in this the, book the master builder got rid of him uh, that's what they think happened but <laughs> it's not in this book as far as this book's concerned he's dead he's okay. not but that's well, yeah, because we Master Chief has to punch him to death in the fourth game. Again, I don't know why they didn't think of that when they were doing this book. Like, they're doing a lot of sciencey stuff, doing well, a lot of problem just, solving. You when could you could just, just be punching a, it, yeah, you could just put a guy. They've already got armor. All you need is a gun. You put him on the planet. You say, "I'll be back for you in a week. Clean this up." Yeah. Here's well, a sexy my, AI like, lady. Get to work. I don't believe I don't believe humanity just put a third of its population in the way. You put 10 Spartans down there 
you assign a trophy for that mission on Xbox Live, and they <laughs> and will have them it some done. gamer fuel, and you get them you, you going. Give them gamer fuel, and you <laughs> jazz them up. Um, but yeah, so he recognizes the librarian as his wife. She recognizes him as her husband. They that's both kind of know that's not the reality, but they but both roll okay with, with it. it. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, is she hot? Is that why he's yes. like, yeah, okay, all right. That explains it. But he's not. I mean, maybe to her he is. It's kind of weird. I I don't know. But yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of the end. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. what? I mean, it's it's a cliffhanger. So, so okay, so there's a bunch of yada yada explosions. Uh, the rings get taken. The orange gets destroyed. And then... Hi, honey, I'm home. The end? Yeah. I swear well, I there it... was something more to this. <laughs> Not that I remember. Do do they ever talk to the primordial? No, not in this one. Really? I thought the book ended with him. Oh, him. no. He doesn't. Okay, so he does remember the didact talking to the primordial. Okay. That's kind of important. And yeah, it is. I didn't really follow <laughs> what was going on. So I'm guessing if I played the game, I would have known it was like, I don't even know that it's really called the primordial. I just know that he found something that claimed to be the last precursor that looked like an arthropod. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't really. I'm. I'm assuming if I'd played the games, that would have meant more to me. No, uh, I don't think the precursors ever show up or are even mentioned in the games, unless it was in five. But no one played five. Yeah, that didn't stick with me at all. <laughs> there, there is a lot of stuff like that. Like the halos. I, I think when the halos first show up. I'm supposed to know what that is, and I didn't really. They're halos, Ben. They... Yeah, I gathered that, <laughs> but I didn't know. I kind of remembered that they were big things that you could ride a Jeep around on. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know that they did anything. They killed things within 25,000 light years, Ben. Okay. So... So the primordial, so the flood, the the powder is the desiccated remains of the precursors. Okay, that seems like a dumb thing. Uh, I think that they they went into some sort of metabolic. Uh, they 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 went into stasis after they got their asses kicked by the forerunner, and then something happened and they ended up becoming corrupted or some shit. And that's how they became the powder. And then eventually the flood, I think it's all from like wikis. I kind of remember reading and then the flood fucking hate the forerunner and I... also eat everything. Okay. So. I don't know. I got powder. I know there was like some arthropod guy down there and that he claimed to be a precursor. I don't really know what that means. Well, what did he say, though? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. So so the ending to you. Oh, no, 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 no. I think he said <laughs> that... Okay. I we, this up now. <laughs> so I think he said that something like he was going to take revenge on them for 
killing the precursors. Like, I think he said something like, we made you, you ungrateful bastards, and we're going to kill you, or I'm going to kill you. Like, he seemed generally displeased. Like, it was a lot in very few words. Like, okay, he's a precursor. I don't know what that is. The forerunners apparently killed the precursors. I didn't know that. And now the 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 precursors, like the humans, were fighting the... I, I don't fucking... That was a lot. I I assume it would be more. It wasn't well developed in this book, to me. I it did not stick with me at all. The the didact seeks to find the lost halo ring controlled by MB and the captive from Charamhakor, which I think is the precursor, right? Yes. And he recalls what the captive said when he communicated with it thousands of year, years prior. The entity. Wow, thousands of years. Jesus. The entity revealed that it was, in fact, the last precursor that the Forerunners had been created by its kind millions of years ago before they ruthlessly destroyed their creators. Finally, the being obviously stated that their answer is at hand. Oh. See? Okay. So I guess you were just supposed to know that that... (laughs) (laughs) Okay. To be continued... (laughs) That didn't stand out to me as terribly relevant to anything else that had happened in the book. <laughs> now, oh, I guess bye. I'm going to... I So, I, I'll tell you my prediction based on what I read. And you could tell me if I am even in the ballpark. I get the vibe that somehow the precursor and or the flood corrupted the AI and that the precursor is working together with the AI and the flood to kill the forerunners. I'm sure that the precursor does in fact work alongside anyone that will kill the forerunner. And yes, the AIs that come in contact with the flood get all crazy and weird. Yeah. So that that's the vibe I got. That's that's what I thought they were setting up in the next book. But this book, to me, the end of this book was the Forerunner government got blown up. And Forerunner civilization is at its ultimate low point. Well, I that's why we didn't... need a strong, chadly man. Like Born Stellar makes didact eternal hardness. And he's going to... He's going to start master chiefing his way through the flood. Yeah, man. I don't know. Well, would you like me to rubric this for you? I did that. Okay, sure. And would you said you'd recommend it. Would you read the second book? Um, yeah, I guess if you wanted me to. So I'll tell you the truth. Like, I... I mentioned to you when I was reading this, I was like, it's a shame it's a Halo book because there's interesting stuff going on with the Forerunner, but then there's stuff like that. What what did you call him? Primordial? I would barely, it's barely registers. Like I remember they were looking for a prisoner, but it barely, like I forgot that they were looking for a prisoner for most of the book because it's so much about the Forerunners. That seems to be what Greg Bear could really like do something with. Because he talked a little bit about how he would have long conversations with 343 about what was already established and what he could add to and what he couldn't. And so he's kind of restricted there. But then there's this flip side of like, when I think of Halo, Spartan, Master Chief, Shooty Man, I don't think of long treatises on the mantle <laughs> and cast and the domain and how important it is and how the, this is really about born stellar overcoming his naivety and his selfishness, his like thirst for adventure turns into a desire to sacrifice for the greater good. And the greater good to him moves from forerunners to, all life and 
I don't like. I don't know if that's gonna vibe with the Halo crowd. Because <laughs> I, yeah, I, no. I, some... I like how you said hardcore <laughs> Halo fans. Sorry, or something like that. And I'm like, hardcore Halo fans aren't listening to this. There's not enough gamer fuel in Master Chief. Well, that's kind of the vibe I got from some of the reviews. Is people are like, oh, this is really boring. And I was like, it, it is a bad fit for Halo. The way the games play. Like, I like the Dark Souls games and, and Bloodborne and all that. And they have like these huge lore components and um, environmental storytelling things that you could write giant books on though that would ruin some of the fun of discovery halo it seems like all of this is just shunted off to an appendix somewhere like you read the file to unlock the thing and then nobody reads the appendix and i like the gameplay of halo does not tell this story in any way shape or form no the gameplay of halo is let's go kill the covenant and oh flood have shown up i guess we'll kill them too so i guess my thing is I wouldn't read this book on my own because I would be expecting something different from a Halo book. And Halo fans who read this book are going to be disappointed because it's probably not what they're expecting from a Halo book. I don't know if this is a popular opinion. I don't really know anything about the Halo community. All I know is this book has a kind of low rating. And if you go to the Wikipedia page for this book, it's like reviews were mixed. And I don't think it really deserves to have mixed reviews, but at the same time, I get it. Because it's kind of like the wrong book in the wrong place. I would read a second one if if you want me to, but like I'm sure would I'd enjoy you, it. Would you read it if I didn't care? No. Okay. And but I, I want to be clear that I feel bad because I'm I'm about to give this book a very high rating. <laughs> but the reason I wouldn't read it, I, like I I wouldn't decide to invest my time in it, is because it's very world buildy, and it's the kind of thing you want to really like sink your teeth into and get your lore hat on, and wonder about like all the civilizations of this galaxy. And Greg Bear's dead. And I know if I look any further for more stuff set in this setting, I'm going to find like the fall of reach. (laughs) (laughs) Where Master Chief punches people (laughs) to save the day, Ben. And I have no interest in playing the games and I I cannot wait for Halo Star is, Rail, where we get we unlock Master Chief waifus and a quest for more microtransactions. So what we're gonna what you're unwrite all is, of this lore. This right here should have just been set in the Dune universe, and then Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert should have written Halo books. I think Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert are an infinitely better fit for Halo books. Yeah, I'd agree. And that's not even a knock. Actually, I, uh, well, I mean, it's it's kind of a knock, but the good news then is uh, they would have more editors and like continuity people, and like, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't have a chapter that's just a repeat of a previous chapter. No, and they could do that cinematic bullshit they like. You can describe somebody playing Halo, and I'm sure that's what they want i don't know i don't know what i don't know what halo fans shitty writers i don't know what halo fans want in a book (laughs) they want to see master chief chug some gamer fuel before he goes to punch people's entire faces in this is my thing i understand that halo for whatever reason feels it is very important to have a rich lore but it's not and no one cares i'm sure someone out there cares very deeply the people writing this wiki obviously care very deeply but 
I doubt most people who have played Halo for hundreds and hundreds of hours know any of this shit happens. I kind of wonder if a large amount of the Halo player base even plays the campaign. <clears throat> I think they played the first three game campaigns. I think that's probably true too. But once multiplayer, online multiplayer became ubiquitous on consoles, I I think it's just a shooter to play with your friends. Like you might as well write me Call of Duty books. Maybe they do. I don't know. Yeah, they're called history books. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So I'm gonna rubric this for you. All right. I'm sorry if I'm offending Halo fans. No, not, like... no, Ben. I actually wanted to know the lore. Like, after playing the first two Halo games, I was excited to see Halo 3. Um, I missed all seven of the stupid terminals that tell you all this shit. Because they were hidden. I didn't know they were there. And I was, I was actually a little disappointed until I googled it to find that lore. So I would imagine that a lot of people who, even people like me, who actually gave a shit, like, the game just doesn't provide it. Well, like, so I don't think Halo fans care. I feel like Halo is walking a fine line between, like, Doom and... I can't really think of another shooter off the top of my head that does this like warrior monk kind of thing. Cause master chief seems like a bro. He he's just like a jarhead gets the job done. Kind of guy. That's why he never got promoted beyond master chief. Despite saving the human race on multiple occasions. I seriously keep forgetting. That's not his name, (laughs) but This story, <laughs> the didact, who is the closest Name thing to a master chief. Master chief. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Who would name their kid the didact? Weird aliens. So I, I kind of th- like the didact is kind of the thing in the master chief in this, and he's this warrior monk type who has devoted himself to like study and the morality of combat and all that stuff. And he's he's a big, tough, fighty man, but there's more to him. It, and that kind of story, I don't. That's not why I play shooters. That's probably why I can't think of a good example. I play shooters to shoot things, but I like Doom. I I like Halo. To be honest with you, I played Halo Infinite with you for hundreds of hours, and I don't know anything about halo infinite i will never buy the campaign i don't care yeah i like the game if it helps game (laughs) if it helps halo infinite undid halo 5 which no one played because it was bad well and that's the thing like am i gonna read however many hundreds of pages of this just to have it undone when i could go and read any of Greg Bear's other novels? Well, if it helps, Ben, none of this was undone because uh, it happened so far in the past that it doesn't really matter to the Halo story. Which, again, is know. a guy kills aliens with his punching and his shooting. Okay, let's 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 rubric this and and be on our way. Content and ideas. I'm going to give it a four. Oh, my God. I think there is a lot of original ideas around the Forerunner Society. He put a lot of thought into their concept of the mantle, their caste system, their integration with their technology, their biology. He put a lot of thought into uh, how humanity was reforming. I, I like the idea of the Florians living alongside the the anatomically modern humans. Um I think he did his his very best at integrating all the Halo stuff, though I'm not an expert on this. And I kind of trust that the gaps I found in the story will be developed. I'm reviewing one part of a trilogy. 
So, yeah. Uh, organization. This is where a lot of reviewers of this book are going to disagree with me. I'm going with a four again. Oh my god. I thought it connected most plot points together in a satisfying way. I don't know what the hell the prisoner was. I understand he is called a primordial and he's a precursor and some of the precursors were ground into a fine powder to be snorted later or something. <laughs> Who put them in the jars? That's what I want to know. Probably the primordial. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the pacing was actually pretty good. I don't think the action comes very quickly, but I don't think the action is necessarily the pacing in this story. The mysteries and the lore reveals and the conspiracy of the council building the halos and hiding the flood invasion. That's the plot. And that is paced pretty well. It was a pretty short read. Um, use of language. Uh, you might be detecting the pattern here. It's a four. Uh, it's engaging. It adds flavors to the character in the world. It's weird. It, it's sure weird. I, I think their naming conventions are weird. But it, it does make them seem alien. He manages to write aliens that are both different from humans and also more similar to humans than they're really comfortable with. And he hints that there are reasons for that, that perhaps we are not so distantly related species. We're not so different. You and I. Yeah. Personal preference. I mean, we are now that you fucking, yeah. doesn't make up for the fact you de-evolved us in the first place. Fucker. I have no, I, I don't even know if they did. Oh, I, I see think, no evidence of that. You know, I think one of those humans becomes guilty spark. I think I remember reading that, that that used to be a person. And I was like, well, that's kind of dumb. Okay. Guilty spark sounds like a five nights at Freddy's thing. We're moving on personal preference. It's a four. Oh my God. I liked the book. There were elements that didn't quite work for me. The element is it's set in the Halo universe. I think that's an artificial constraint on an otherwise good story. And I kind of wish the material was in a universe whose stewardship I trusted more. I don't think Halo really... I don't, I don't think it's wise for 343 to prioritize the story in the Halo games. I'm not criticizing them for not doing that. I think they need to prioritize gameplay first because Halo is the kind of game that needs to be fun to play first and foremost. But because of that, I don't really trust them to care about the story or the world or to not get rid of all of this when it becomes too inconvenient for them. Because you know eventually they will make the game where it's the forerunner human war. And then, you think they will? Yeah. I mean, they're going to run out of ideas eventually. So, uh, recommendations. I don't think strength. they will because that doesn't have a Master Chief punching people. So, What if he goes back in time? Oh my god, why haven't they done that yet? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ben, why haven't you written stories for fucking 343? <laughs> All right. In Halo 7, Master Chief goes back in time and he starts beating the shit out of Forerunners too. Let's make it happen. 343, my, my consulting fees are very reasonable. Uh, recommendation strength. This is a weird one. I'm going to go with a 4. Oh my God. Fours across the board. Here's my logic. I'm not a Halo fan. I don't super understand people who are interested in the Halo lore. Yeah, you're a Halo enjoyer. <laughs> but if you are interested in the Halo lore, 
Like if you are the kind of person who would spend hours reading these Wikipedias or looking up YouTube videos that talk about the lore for hours, you could do worse than reading this book. Like I, I think also, especially if you're a person who doesn't read a lot of books, if you're really into the Halo lore, this might be like an easy in to getting back into reading because it reads like a hard sci-fi book, but it might be about things that are familiar to you. And that may give you like a more points of reference to engage with the material. I don't know. So I'm going to say it's a strong recommendation to genre fans. And by genre fans, I'm going to mean fans of the halo story. I think halo is big enough to kind of be a genre I think with all the Halo branding, nobody who's unfamiliar with Halo would check this out. But I could give it a weak recommendation to anyone who's not a Halo fan as well, because, like, it's not bad. I... Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, that's what... 40 time or 40 plus 20 is 60 out of 100. Is that what that is? No, I'm multiplying wrong. Yeah, I don't know where you got those numbers, buddy. Uh, no, sorry, is I was looking at something. times five? It's 15 times five. So <laughs> uh, 10 times five is 50. And 75. five times five is 25, 75. Ten five out of hundred. Right. Ben says, "Check it out." That's all right. Reference. Well, with that, um, I'll shout out the patrons later because I need I need a nappy nap. But mm-hmm. let me know, everyone, if you want me to do that Dune thing. There's still time to let us know by the time this episode goes out. But not a whole lot of time. Not much. <laughs> you've, you've got a day after this goes live. So. Yeah, we record on Mondays. So. Yeah. All right. Final word, Ben. Mendicant. Right, just... Blue? Medicant bias, Ben. Medic Medicant bias. Me- Medicaid Medicaid AI. Medicaid blue. The Medicaid blue is coming for your health. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Special thanks to our patrons. If you want to be a patron, go to the website. Link is in the description. If you want to be a crazy person who pays us more money than you really ought to. You'll get a special shout-out at the end. In no particular order, we have John Bierce, an actual author. Go check out his Patreon. Go check out his works, The Rack, Mage Errant. We covered both of those on this podcast. He's also got a lot of short stories, tons of sequels to The Mage Errant, and he's working on another project we can't wait to get into. We have Shy with a Y on tiktok so just go there i don't know anything about tiktok because i'm a normal person and i'm not five got him then we have the jamies first jamie jamie walker hi jamie and james with if you want the gravy where he is encroaching on our territory by writing about books, as well as movies and other stuff, but also books. If he wasn't paying for us, we'd have to have a word. And then finally, there is Isikai Sensei-sama from another podcast that Ben is also a part of. That time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster podcast. I'm pretty sure that's everyone. I'm going to go take a nap.